And here we go. This is still Flash at the Dork Table on Saturday, the ninth day of May 2020, in the year <laughs> make believe and all kinds of disastrous shits going on right now. Anyway, I think Grim gave me the big and here we go on the chat, so he's got me in there. And uh, thank you, Grimner, for the usual stuff, making this radio stuff we do possible. That's the way to put it. And we got for the uh, bots and bodies for chatter today in the RLM chat room on RealLibertyMedia.com. <laughs> got Barman, Beetle, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Asmo, Circolo. Hello. She's right next to me on her computer. Damn Van Meter. Duh. Ada. Me. Frumpy Work. Frumpy. I be hey, the ghost of Don is visiting us. That's so weird. Uh Meisterbrow, Prince, Rob Works, trust no one. Vanna White, W four D K B what dork Woodman Hey we Phantom C C six six Chaskara Chloe Singular Cyborg Noodle E Man N Civ Gromit Matt W J two O O two Pone Size Quasimodo <laughs> Sack Puppet Smart Ass and the Holiest Roger. So for your chattering in the chat room, those are your victims today. And boy are we in a fucked up <laughs> situation. I don't know. I, let, let me see. They, Grim was posting uh, links earlier, just before I came on to do this Dork Table solo today. And one of them was about this nurse. See, there's none of this stuff is verbal. It's all vi video. And I don't know how this is going to go over, but I'm going to post that. Wait a minute. He posted it. So it's already on the RLM chat. But I'm going to put it into the notes of the show. I hope this works because <laughs> we're going to have a little bit of fun on the dork table solo today and do a quick hour and go home and knock down a wall or something. I don't know. Okay, so we go paste and there it is. Boom. See? Now, what it was is this nurse got up there on the, I guess the YouTube so far, right? And in two minutes, if you watch it, she explains to you what the truth about this thing that we're going through here truly is from her side. So, you know, not not that this soup isn't so fucked up already that most people aren't going to listen at this point. They've made up their mind months ago. I think you make your mind up in the beginning. Now, there's been a handful of people that weren't sure at the very start of this, in my opinion, you know, in their behavior. Like my wife, I can, she's sitting right next to me. She would insist it in the beginning, well, let's see how this plays out. So she never really took a side in it. I did right away. I went, oh, fuck you people. You're all full of shit. Nothing I've ever heard that came out of government in my whole life ever turned out to be true. So why would this? Why Why is this the exception to, you know, 60 years of experience tells you, uh, hmm. no, they got it right this time because Trump's in control. So, <laughs> thought that would be funny. Anyway, but I don't know. It seems as though, like, parts of the world have grabbed onto this and are using it for a political gain. <laughs> Grip says, me, post links, never. Okay, then it wasn't you. It was somebody that was, ex they were impersonating you on your site. There you go. But anyway, he's, he distracted me from myself with myself. Because I think today uh, everybody's either hungover or busy. It's like Saturday. And this lockdown shit, well, I guess lockdown is kind of a, 
subjective term because it depends on where you're staying at the time you're living through this. Some places are strict and some places aren't. And I don't know where everybody lives. And even if I do know where you live, it doesn't mean I know what the existing lockdown rules are in your particular area. And I'm still amazed five countries that managed to back out of this whole thing altogether. Maybe it's all part of a long-range plan. <laughs> How's that for, uh, what do you call it? Cons piracy theory. Right here, live on the Dork Table Podcast. Because you can't fuck things up this badly by accident. Even, I mean, even bad luck wouldn't bring this kind of <laughs> disaster. Uh, uh, hmm. Path of destruction, I would say. And they're so subtle about it that they're getting away with doing what they're doing right in front of everybody. So they got a few people that'll gather and put some masks on, carry some signs. They go up all nice to the state. They go, hey, Mr. State, let me go back to work, please, Mr. State. Let me go back to work, oh, please. No, that's about it. In some places, uh, they put up with none of this shit since the start. Now, Denmark's in the middle, kind of pissing me the fuck off. I'm so fucking bored of this stupidity, but the people are back to normal you know, in, in town here. Went to town today to go get some something. I don't know. It wasn't important. But uh, And yesterday was a holiday, so today I was figuring out. It might be Saturday, might be a few people out. And it was incredibly busy for a uh, time of day where they're usually looking to, to end their shopping. Now they got people out there shopping, <laughs> supporting the local economy. Things, I guess, they're more involved in their own community than I ever really knew. I could see it, but I couldn't prove it. And now I'm looking at, we're all connected on the internet. We all got... Uh, the ability to buy this shit from other sources outside and have it delivered. But there's still a lot of support, you know, by the local guys to keep their town going. So I kind of, I enjoy the fuck out of this. And uh, <laughs> I know I've said this a few times, it's kind of cruel. I guess if you're having a bad uh, coronavirus, it would just depend on the bit of dirt you're staying on through the hoax. It's definitely a hoax. And you know two ways about that. Not that there isn't a corona fucking virus. Is that the way they've explained everything to us has been based on a lot of shit. Some of the details are right, <clears throat> depending on where you apply them. <laughs> it's, a, it's a subjective kind of a game. You know? Oh, well, they told the truth about this, but they lied about that. Well, my theory goes like this. If you lie once, I don't really care what you're talking about anymore. Not on this scale of information. You know, if you're a government, and the only thing that you're capable of doing is passing on a bullshit story to me to justify why you're stealing everything that isn't bolted down, wherever you can go, well, I get a little disappointed. <clears throat> now, there's a few guys on the RLM chat that agree with that. There's... Uh, few women that don't. <laughs> it's funny how that works. It, for different reasons, I would suppose. Too. But we'll blame it on the Paul Paul politics. politics. <laughs> Fucking politics. Too bad Mary's not here so she could explain to you <laughs> what a politic is. Uh, speaking of Mary, uh, she's on Secret Grammy Mary Visitations. In an undisclosed location with her grandchildrens, because apparently the state and relatives and all this kind of uh, hoopla going on with this Corona shit has interrupted her personal life, <clears throat> you know, because of all this bullshit intervention from every fucking corner of the goddamn world, but your backyard. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I can't make sense of it. So. What do I do? Um, hmm. 
the physical reality is exactly the opposite of all the horrible things I read. There, that's the way to put it. So I was listening to the Freakers Ball. I got up early. I took a long snooze. I've been working around the yard with Sir. So I got really tired. So I took a long, good, good night sleep. Got up early this morning. Caught half of the Freakers Ball. And it it dawns on me <laughs> that uh, people are fed up, up to their eyeballs with being locked down. And when I brought that up, uh, I got slapped around for it. <laughs> but some people do not respond well to isolation. Now, if it doesn't affect them physically, it gets them in the brain department. Because they're social beings. They like to go do shit and have fun and be places and whatnot. When you isolate that person, that kind of personality, and you lock them up, they, they snap. And eventually, <laughs> that's what happens to all of us. Just a different way. So, But it's uh, one of those uh, I was right kind of things where, oh, I sure wish I was wrong. You know, where people could spend time in isolation against their will and be okay with it. But no, we're human. We're not really like that. Some of us are. I guess we grow that way. I don't think, well, maybe Grimm didn't. Grimm seems to have started out a, a kind of one of those grumpy little guys that grew up to be a big grumpy guy. So, well, hey, you know, we're, the world isn't all the same. That's what makes the damn thing so interesting is, yeah, yeah. It, well, that's right, because I'm not being rude or mean. I'm just saying, this is how you, you talk. You tell us, stay away. People are nasty. Stay away from people. And some people are. I agree. <laughs> no, I, I know that. I'm small. You're the big gorilla. I'm the, I'm the small gorilla. I understand that. But anyway, to... Uh, to live isolated should be a choice that you make. See, that's how I mean it. It's, if it's forced on you, it can create problems that you didn't know you had because it deprives you of whatever it is that you're doing. You can't can't take a human being and control them against their will, is what I'm saying. And uh, there's a lot of that. I heard Moose saying that she's had enough. She can't go. How much longer... Can the state expect you to live like this, like some kind of a caged rat? You know, and you're not allowed to do this, and everybody's on bitch mode, snitching each other off on the phone over stupid crap. You know, wow. So, if that was the situation I would be in, I'd be pissed off as fuck. <laughs> I mean, wow. But, of course, I'm reporting quite the opposite on the radio. And then everybody's got their story. You know, I'll give you that. So if you don't believe me, that's that's fine. I, I appreciate that because in this time where there's so much shit going on, it's hard to believe there's anything going on that's not shit. So I just go back to the uh, barbed wire or rope. You know, so I've got rope tied me down. So I've got the illusion of freedom. And, and what I'm seeing back home is barbed wire. Very disappointing. And to the to make this a political freaking game, the Republicans want this and the Democrats mm -hmm. want that, just goes to show you what a fraud it truly is. You know? And how desperate these political fucks are to try to maintain power in this time. You know, they we've got the internet, and Larry and Rob have been uh, on a project. And Larry's finished the project to a point, so he's got history. Rob's learning the project and wants to create his own. And he found out just how difficult it is to uh, be an independent contractor in this kind of a field. It seems to take a lot of people to accomplish the goal. One, you know, this is the, the point of networking, I suppose, like using the Real Liberty Media for information. And over the years, I tell you, Grandma, I've gotten some really good shit off the reallibertymedia.com chat room links just you know, for to find out if this is true or find out if that's true or 
what you can how how a how to grow an aloe vera plant or some people are posting all kinds of stuff. You never know what it's going to be. Sometimes we just got memes <laughs> making fun of politics or what have you. But there's been yeah a lot of uh, a lot of very helpful things. So in this time where people are having it tough, what would I want to be? I don't even know what if words would help me. You know, if I was on the receiving end of all this, uh, I don't know if words would be any kind of comfort at all. I'd want to see action. And I think that's where uh, Moose was at this morning when I was listening to uh, Freaker's Ball with you, Grim. You know, she's just frustrated. She knows she's frustrated. Pinned down and, you know, being attacked by barking dog complaints from some petty woman. Um, hmm. Yeah, these things would wear on me, too. I, I'm only human. Fortunately, I don't don't seem to uh, have that kind of atmosphere going on. So it's got to be a matter of politics. The people in your you know area that you live in are dictating the politics that you live under, I suppose. And it sounds like a strict area where you are. Like, uh, there's a couple of people that are living like that where there's a lot of control and uh, manipulation by the state. And the rumors are, this is the way I understand this, that Bill Gates and his group of people, whoever they may be, want to actually inject the entire planet with a vaccine to stop a disease that kills like 2% of the people that get it. Hmm. And not only that, but it's not like a rarity, like seven people are going to get it and it's going to kill, you know, three of them. I mean, 200 people get it, 2% of them could die from it. Ooh. So, here we are. Worldwide, it's supposed to be. And I'm not so sure they're telling the truth about this. They never tell us the truth. Well, when was the last time you heard the... Uh, mainstream media tell us anything that didn't turn out to be beneficial to them or bullshit when one or the other. But what do we got here? We got Grim putting up stuff. He says, good for him. And it's called, this is the final straw Elon Musk wilts down. Says he's suing Alameda County and moving Tesla out of California. Oh, poor Elon. Hmm. So I mean, all this drama. This guy's so rich, he's got enough money to move car manufacturing plants from one place to the other. But there's millions of people in distress right now. And the only thing he cares about is moving his multi-million dollar Tesla car company somewhere else. Blah, 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 blah. Wow. Yeah, see, that's the, the... If you read enough of this shit, and you're locked down in your place. Hey, Vinny. I don't know if Vinny, if he knows I'm doing a dork table or cares, but hey, Vinny just came in. Oh. Hmm. Oh, boy. It's hard to uh, read all the bad stuff and, and really judge. I guess judge it is the right way to put it. You know, because it doesn't have a physical value. I'm not seeing it. So it's just like, hey... It's all like my memories of, you know, bad shit I've been through or whatever, but they're basically all back home anyhow. America was, uh, that was a trip to live there all the years I did. I spent about, I don't know, uh, how many years away from the States? Total, probably about 10 years out of my whole life to date away from America. So I spent 50 years there. And I think that, you know, if somebody was uh, judged by the amount of time they spent doing something to qualify them as a, uh, somebody qualified to judge it, 50 years of experience would probably weigh in pretty good. But I live in a time where we have instant everything, communication, you got the uh, what do you Facebook? And you got the Twitter, and you got the jitter, and you got the zitter, and all this shit. And I know it's all necessary to for, to do things in a grander scale, but I don't really give a shit. 
myself. I mean, Grim does, you know, Vinny does, people do, but hmm, I don't, I don't see it that it's that important to me. But I see how it's important to other people to get the things they need to uh, do, the things they're trying to do. And the last thing I want to do is pretend I want to be involved and you know make that happen because that's not my my end. I don't think. Well, hey, you got the, uh, you know, you've got a nice site going on. There's good people that use it. There's some crazy people that use it. That's going to come, you know, that goes with social. You've always got a few wackadoodles in the wings to keep everybody smiling. You know, my self-esteem goes up 800% every time I encounter Hansel. So, my, whew, I, I'm glad I've got a Hansel to remind me of what I could have ended up like if, if I would have uh, been accepted into the military. Things went the way they did in my life so that I could be where I'm at now, I suppose. I mean, that's one way, you, can, you know, hindsight and all that shit. You go, well, every step I took led me down the road that I'm on today. But while you're doing it, <laughs> it's not always like that. But it seems to be true in the end. You know, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with all that, but ah, let's see. Does says Cirque gets a deer and Grim only gets a hey yeah. That's right. I've been married to Cirque for six years. Are you kidding? I like I don't like my toast burnt accidentally because I forgot her. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> but I think that would be you know things that people do uh, for each other. That's where, <laughs> that's where friendships are made. I think you know, it's little favors that you can do for somebody else. Uh, they do something back for you, and, and that's, that's how we associate with each other. You know, I do it in society all the time. Ran by the the kid's house today. Ash, Ash was out on the uh, on the balcony when I was going to the grocery. He yells down in English, and he was chitter chattering back and forth about this, that, and the other for a few minutes, and. I had to go on to go get my stuff. We parted ways. And life is back to normal as far as I'm concerned. Whatever normal. I know nobody likes that word, but I seem to have one. A calm, peaceful, easy uh, existence that doesn't in entertain or include enforcement is my normal. So the other people in the world, they got <clears throat> they've got other ideas. Because their normal involves you. Mine doesn't. Um, hmm. My normal day is me, 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 me. And then I look across the room over here, and I got a wife somewhere. There she is. And I look across the room over there. There's a dog, and that's pretty much in the cat somewhere, but we never know where. <laughs> He's evil. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling It's got to be disgusting to some people, Grim, because, yeah, I'm... I feel fine. If anything, this whole uh, this whole hoax game that they're playing with everybody uh, it's worked out in my favor in areas that are uh, obscure, like Cirque's work schedule. You know that that worked out for me. See, being a hmm, selfish onlooker, but if it hadn't have gone that way, she was already working from the house before all the corona crap ever started. So hmm, that was negotiated long before that. But <clears throat> the luxury of it, the hoax just pushed that right into her lap. Here you go. So, you know, I guess it depends on what side of the whip you're on on this fight. Because phew, a lot of people are, they're writing things like I seen an Italian guy on a link in the parliament or something, just going ape shit. And he's speaking Italian, so they're writing in subtitles on the screen to read it. And he's complaining about him lying about the death rate to make this uh, virus seem so important. And he called it just a way to take over the country through dictatorial methods in the long run. So there's a strong opposition to the, uh, I guess, the way that they're doing this to us, you know, the who, and it's all based on a bunch of crap. But if you're not intelligent enough to know that, well, there you go. 
And it's sad to put it that way, but yeah, it just takes a little bit of reading to see through the, the bullshit. But if you've watched enough TV and movies and you vote, and you're stuck on the state would never lie to you that you're going to believe this Corona shit. And the state has taken liberties. Oh, man. They want to make it uh, legal to enter your home in California, in uh, Ventura, I think it was. Got a link on it. And uh, they want to go into the home, the, I guess the CDC or the WHO or some fucking organization, and check you in your house. And if you've got a fever or a symptom, take you away. Now, this is the same thing that has no symptoms and you can carry it. Well, who, I mean, I guess I, I'm just not that easily bullshitted that I don't see how this is just crap. Five-year-old would go, hey, where's my cookie? You ate my cookie. I want my cookie back. And that would, they would never recover from you eating their cookie. But here's a gr whole planet full of adults that watch the fucking movie. Think they're goddamn experts on fucking viruses because they saw it in a movie. Oh, man. Now, the dis this is the disappointing part is the experts that are making video links that aren't get they get banned first they get banned off YouTube they end up on BitChute. They're the ones telling the truth. I said easily just for you, Vincent, because I knew you like it. I'm only a mean prick now and again, not all the time, just once in a while. But, uh, hmm. well, what could we do? I think Moose was talking about communes bringing the, uh, the world back together. And that's similar to what I've been saying quite a bit over the years is the answer to the problems to me have, have always shown itself to be a small community. You know, where it's too big, you can't manage it. It breeds thieves and weirdos and rapists and all that kind of shit. And they did laboratory experiments with mice and rats to prove all the things they, they prove with society. They already knew the outcome before they ever put the buildings up. But for some reason, the money that, that operates the shit that we live in wanted this mess that we're in to be just the way it is. And then somehow or another, this is the weird part of the equation. I think that the internet was supposed to be like the TV and work against us all. And apparently, now there's a percentage of people that can look at the internet and not be uh, hypnotized by its bullshit. You can see beyond that. They get the idea, hey, let's shut down all these advertisements and stop them from coming on my computer. Hmm. And see what happens when we do that. Hmm. I've got another idea. I'll stop watching mainstream news. Let's see where that goes. <laughs> and the next thing you know, well, if you're reasonable, you'll realize that everything that you've ever heard from the Fed over your whole lifetime was pretty much bullshit. I can find a nicer word, I guess, if I dig real deep in my bag of tricks. But I don't want to. I don't want to call it bullshit. Hmm. And I might disappoint some people out there in the radio listening world because, uh, you know, their reality would dictate to them, we've got roads and we got this and we got that. And they rely on results of people that are dead. <laughs> my favorite one is, the misunderstanding about the Constitution, you know, and there's two ways to look at this Constitution thing. One, the way I look upon it is I never signed no fucking Constitution, and that's a contract, and I know I'm out. The other side of it is the government has done everything to take it away from you so you can't use it. They've done it through Admiralty Court. They actually mastered it in Admiralty Court. You cannot use a constitutional right or uh, background as an argument to save your ass with the government because they won't hear the argument. <laughs> Showing exactly what Admiralty Court is. Hal, Hal likes to argue that you can go in there and if you're armed properly, that you might come out alive. 
And I wish him all the fucking luck in the world, but I would never play with the Admiralty Court. No, thank you. I've had my luck in the past with him. So I wouldn't want to push something like that. That's a dragon with four heads. You, you never know where they're at. But for those of you that are, you know, uh, legal, law-abiding, and all that good stuff, and you want to play Admiralty Court, good luck. It can, it's a matter of money. It goes whatever, wherever, whoever can afford the lawyers the longest will win in the end. So, hmm, that's, that doesn't seem to me to be like a, a game of honesty versus dishonesty. <laughs> it seems to con a lot of other people. But until it doesn't uh, suit their, their system, like if they're, say, we got a personal guy on the uh, reallibertymedia.com has a real problem with women. I remember this uh, Florida case, right? The owners of the com company that constructed the bridge were women. Now, it never said that the women were the ones that built it, but they were the ones responsible for building it. <laughs> And because it collapsed, it collapsed because they were incompetent women. Hmm. And when you dissect something like that, you don't really know where the weak spot is, you know, unless you're an expert in demolition or shit falling down or whatnot. But there's usually like layers, people that design things and people that actually do the labor work to build something. And, if you've ever built anything in your life and had to work with what they call a designer, these people want the impossible most of the time. And they settle for what can be done in the end. But when it starts out, it's always some clusterfuck of things that could never be physically done. But they look good. And when you put them on paper, they look like, well, we could pull that off until you try it. Building it in itself is like, wait a minute, <laughs> this isn't going. Anyway, that was just a an old memory of a job that just kind of got away with me for a moment. I'm back. <laughs> well, you know when you when you sit in your own memories while you're talking about stuff, other things they pop up. It's weird doing radio. Don't laugh, sir. It's not that fun. My my wife was laughing because I got lost. <laughs> anyway, in my how if I was in your mind, what would you do? Where would you go? There's not enough room in there for both of us. <laughs> I could take over a small country for just nineteen ninety five. I'm American. I should be waving an American flag, buying guns, taking over Denmark, but. Nah, I just figured I'd leave Denmark the fuck alone. Let let it do what it does. You know, just kind of watch it. It's what I've done wherever I've been. You know, I don't get involved in politics. And, uh, I think protesting is for lunatics. I think if you're going to beg me to not stomp you in the face, wow, why am I trying to stomp you in the face in the first place? So, no, I don't want to play shit like that. And it's my experience that if you stay out of it, it leaves you alone. you got to look for trouble in life for trouble to find you. Um, hmm. Of course, I think the... <laughs> I guess trouble is a subjective kind of word. You know, because Grimm's trouble might not bother me one bit. And yet my trouble might not bother him at all. But you never know until the trouble goes, hey... Guess what? <laughs> or ha have any of you ever played with your pal Mischief? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man, I used to do that when I was younger. Now, <laughs> now I just kind of do radio programs and then reminisce in my mind while I'm talking about something. And I get a flashback of something that happened 30 years ago. That makes me giggle. It's very weird to try to do this radio solo stuff. But it's been an interesting, uh, an interesting journey, you know, through, I guess the journey's been uh, from America to wherever I, you know, I went through it to where I'm at today. 
and then does teasing me on the Arlen. He says, I bet Flash's lack of technical skill may have caused Grimm a minor headache more than once. No, Grimm, Grimm doesn't. Uh, Grimm is like a troubleshooter on the computer. So he kind of looks forward to the problems to see how fast he can fix them. <laughs> is what I think. I don't think there's a whole lot of the stuff that we do is so simple, you know, compared to, to writing code or doing something important. This is just this little radio thing. And uh, every once in a while, Windows, he doesn't like Windows, but he knows how to use Windows. And they're very intrusive and it changes shit behind your back and it does all these nasty little fucking games. And he'll get on here and click, 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 click. And in a few minutes, he'll isolate the problem and remove it. He's like a like one of those mercenaries. He's like an e mercenary for people with computer problems. Right. And then I do my share of screwing things up by not ever learning the proper way to, to deal with this computer. But Windows changes so fucking much. I don't I don't think I've got the patience to do any of that. So I'm lucky enough to have you know, like Cowboy Techs available. I, which I've never asked the other guys. There's a sock puppet knows computers. Rob works. Now Vinny knows how to use shit. So I mean, I would use Vinny for hey, what do I do about this? What do I do about that too? Now here we sit today. Hmm. I don't know how each person is getting along differently. There's really not a there's not a, co a connection, you know, like a balance point. It seems like there's an extreme. I'm in an extreme, and Moose is in an extreme. Grim, <clears throat> it shows when he makes his out his yonder visits and goes to the post office and reports back. I get the tension, a little bit of tension from Grim, but I don't think his personal life has changed. I don't think any of us are personal shit. That's not what's different. What's different is the chains are tightening in ways that you can actually feel them physically now. And then not everyone. I'm just saying the people that it's affecting, it's affecting them. <clears throat> and the people it's not affecting, <clears throat> boy, we must sound like a bunch of arrogant cocksuckers when you think about it. But on the other hand, if you don't have anything bad going on, uh, the only thing you could do would just be <laughs> lie about it or dwell on some petty fucking stupid thing but that really wouldn't be the same because uh, I really take this seriously this is Germany is like what an hour it's an hour by train to the German border give or take I think maybe two it's not far You've got to get off this island and go on to the mainland of Denmark and just, uh, go east I think but there's a German border right there and cross that line it's a whole another world just you know that imaginary fucking line crap that we've all been brainwashed into accepting just like the weed laws <laughs> you know well it's legal in this state but if you go over there we're gonna shove one up your butt and put you in prison over plant so we're back to you know I guess I just can't tell the difference between severity, you know, crossing a border or smoking a joint. It's still some shit that some suit and tie thought of to punish people and make money off them like they were a commodity. You know? And they do trade the stock exchange. They trade uh, uh, prison stock. <laughs> oh, man. They made it a private business. So... Everything that we're doing right now, socially, is pretty much wrong. I think it's all wrong. There's much better ways to engage with other people than to what we've, uh, I guess, collectively been doing since the dawn of creation. I don't know how far back fighting goes. And I'm, a, I'm an argumentative kind of fighting kind of person, if I have to be. But I keep that so minimal, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, Cirque wants me to plant something somewhere, and I want to plant it somewhere else. And for five minutes, that's important. <laughs> then I change my mind and don't give a fuck. But 
I, you know, I want to be like everybody else. <laughs> I wanted that to do that, but no. <laughs> you don't want me to. <laughs> so it, it's like a, it's an amusing kind of thing to <laughs> to play with people for some stupid reason. But when it's happening, I don't really realize it. Then when I, I'm finished doing it, they go, oh, boy, what an idiot. <laughs> Over a plant. Because, you know, you make up your mind about something. And you think you're right. <laughs> and here I've got the Internet to uh, to help correct all my errors. There is a link on every fucking topic that you can imagine. I mean, if I had a, a fetish for glow-in-the-dark fucking uh, sex dolls, there's a there's a link on the on YouTube or, <laughs> or something or a movie on Netflix to get instructions for your you know whatever it is that that ails you. So right now, the whole world has got uh, all their attentions on this fucking stupid virus hoax, right? So that you can't be uh, spending your time doing something important like growing some food, <laughs> right, honey? Uh, maybe even growing some flowers, giving the bees a target, you know, because bees like flowers. There's so much. And wives like flowers. <laughs> See, the winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does says uh, Denmark is crowded. Wow. No, Denmark has mucho de lando that is not it. Well, Cirque says you're crowded. I've driven from here to damn uh, Copenhagen a couple of times. So, well, when I was first here. And I saw plenty of land. Well, she thinks that Americans are going to come over and take over now. But no, you can't buy the land here, so it won't matter. They got laws. you know. Uh, how do you put it? It's like all this illusion about buying American land, you know. You can buy the land. I don't give a fuck if the Chinese buy up every fucking square acre of California. They're still going to have to pay taxes on it. So, they never own land. You never get a clean title. That's what the government is there to stop you from ever doing. Or knowing exists. Or finding a way to acquire. You'll never get clean title to land in America. Hmm. Where did I learn a horrible idea like that? Go figure. Well, if you don't believe it, you doubt it, pursue it. You know, that I challenge you. Show me, send me a link. Show me where I'm wrong. I'd like to, I'd like to meet the person that owns their property because nobody does. The government owns everything. That's the way this game is played. So if you go into that game, you know, accepting the bullshit as, well, that's the way it really is, it's a lot less uh, of a punishment on my ego, I think. Oh, Mr. Grimner and Vinny. Let's see. Vinny gun on. You could stack the world's population like cordwood and only damn one end of Grand Canyon. Physically. Right. And Grimner's going, Trump is a nothing. As are Pelosi, Biden, Frads, Fradke, everyone in D.C. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. <sighs> wow. What? I don't understand is why would somebody that had good intention go into politics to help people? That would be like, who's ever been helped by the actions taken by any fucking form of government? It's always to control this, control that, make the most profit off of you as a commodity. And if you can't see that for what it truly is, you run around waving flags. Well, I guess you know that's what makes your dick hard, but you're not really gonna get anywhere. You might feel better about, it, I guess, if you're in a group, but we're all locked down now, right? <laughs> so, I'm confused, but I don't get it. I'm lost in the weeds. I'm in the tall weeds looking for a ball, and I don't think there is a ball. So I think I just pull off on these weeds and see if I can't dry it out and smoke it. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna like this, but that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, we got fifty oh, she's got one burn. We got fifteen minutes left to kill for a half a dork table. Cause I, I do the solo shit. I just 
ramble and rant, put up a couple of things for people to think about and escape. <laughs> Chloe says, long live gardens to circles. <laughs> ah, very good. Yeah, gardens. That's, I tripped over being interested in that by interacting with Cirque's mom. Because Cirque's mom brought me plants. <laughs> so, And over the years now, we're, we're swapping uh, information on how to do this plant and how to do that. It's kind of cool. And I didn't know I had that kind of interest in me until it happened. So now that I've got plant, I got plants up my, coming out of my pocket. I seen a link today of somebody had used pants. They nailed them to a board and used the pants for soil. And we're growing plants out of the dirt in the pants. <laughs> I just seemed like just a, a different use of clothing. You know, something original. <laughs> it got my attention. I don't think I'm that creative with the gardening. <laughs> but my wife, my, she, got, she got this damn gnome. It's about two foot high. <laughs> it's big, but it's not painted. I might want to paint that. No? You want to leave them gray? I don't know. I was thinking bright orange, too. Like the Trump guy. Hmm? Oh, well, she doesn't want me to paint. But this big, gigantic gnome sitting on the his deck. She's playing around with stuff. Growing flowers and uh, herbs in the, that we usually have in the house. Now they're outside. we got spring. So that's what I mean is w life in Denmark is so much different than life is be being reported in any of the other places. Except Sweden, Nicaragua, Iceland, Taiwan, and Japan. And according to those five countries, they never messed with any of this crap from the start. And no big loss. Things went you know, just like they normally would. But they did lose 1.8% of the people that got whatever this is. So, not that big a deal. But, here we are, 2020. We're supposed to be uh, <laughs> disease-free. <laughs> oh, Doug wants to know how can I paint the? How can Flash paint the top of the gnome? Does he need a ladder? <coughs> wow, you're a mean man, Mister Doug. No, but I, I needed the uh, I needed the ladder to knock down the wall. <laughs> Brick wall, <laughs> two of them. <laughs> yeah, for kicks now. Let's see now. I'm going out there and sledgehammering brick walls down for shits and giggles. But <laughs> uh, I got to spend a couple of days hauling the bricks to the other side of the property, though. <laughs> but that's another story. Mm. Mm. Ah, that was very good. Anyway. Where was I was bitching about something that was an important? I'm sure. I think uh, the biggest kick I get when I go to go to town now is when I see people my age and older, and they're paired up and they're walking hand in hand or arm in arm, like they used to before the you know the thing happened <laughs> in the days ago when the long past way back when <laughs> two fucking months. And anyway, we got like nine more days to endure until they reopen our eateries and dineries and um, drinkeries for our drinking and eating experience. But boy, they held out forever on this shit. I don't know fucking why. They didn't cut food supplies, didn't change one iota. People went a little nuts on a few things in the beginning when they thought it was real because they didn't know what the fuck was going on. Nobody really did. So you have to really be like me, like a pessimist towards government to immediately think, ah, these people are fucking this again. Are you kidding? And this time they came up, this is brilliant, like usual. It's not like they come up with stupid stories. They come up with stories that you can't disprove because you would think that you need to be an expert to understand the, the detail and how involved all this is. When the truth is, is you got to just be old enough to read a book and understand the words you read to know the story from the truth. And, hmm. and
and there's just a lot more folk that are buying the uh, the story. Let me get another bit of that. Than they are spending the time it takes to go, even if it's just finding a link and listening. There's doctors that are out there on the internet, and when they put them up on YouTube, people have been pulling them off YouTube and putting them on BitChute. And letting people know that, hey, they're pulling this stuff off of YouTube, so start, you know, helping, get involved, basically. So it's becoming more and more uh, common to be reading that sort of thing. And there's millions of us that use the internet, so it's gonna, you know, it's like a slow thing. You'd think it would be quicker, but it's not. Uh, I guess we're because of the small groups that we're all in in the in the long run. I mean, even if you're, say, on Facebook and you've got a thousand friends, I mean, how many of them do you sit down and talk to every day? A thousand? Really? You must be really good, because you know what? I can barely handle one person at a time. Ask Mary sometime. She'll tell you. Or Sir. Or Grim. Poor Grim's been on it. <coughs> Whoop. Anyway, but Grim's been on the uh, any desk and the wire trying to help me figure out what I did with the damn computer this time. <laughs> I got the Corona. Yeah, I got the Danish Corona <laughs> with, a, with a twist of hash. I know. See, and if I had Mary here, I could have muted faster and saved you all that crap. I'm a selfish radio entertainer <laughs> at the dork table uh, unleashed unsupervised and oh we got nine minutes to go I think I did alright but <coughs> I would uh, I'd feel more comfortable about all this I suppose in some weird way if I could report horrific problems to uh, you know let you guys know that life sucks here just like it sucks everywhere else but no, I don't. I don't think that's how life really works in the first place. But uh, I think allowing the government that you live under to control your emotions is that's the choice you make. And I know these fuckers are pushing with their, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that. But it's a big world, you know. So hmm, if you're trapped somewhere, I guess that it's a matter of, you know, how you're looking at it. Uh, I don't, hmm, I don't know how to explain how I feel. I feel uh, hmm, confused. I think is probably the only real way to explain it because I've read so much crap over one side of the world to the other. You know, Canada wants this, Australia wants that, China wants this, Russia wants something else, Africa's still looking for water. Uh, you know, people got problems on this planet, and here we are arguing about a freaking virus that. It, Kills 2% of the population that gets it. I thought we'd grown beyond all this years and years ago. But apparently, there's some holdouts. And some of them are in government. And uh, fuck all this. Vote them out. They're, <coughs> they're there now. These crappy fucking laws or rules or codes or whatever the fuck we're living under right now with all this force and, and enforcement. You got to do this and you got to do that. I think eventually something's going to give. Uh, gave in, in Italy, at least on the parliamentary level. I don't know what the people are doing. But when the politicians start screaming at each other about people lying about death tolls to acquire fucking money from a certain you know death certificate so all these problems and hmm, just horrible fucking things going on I think and it brings us down puts you in that fear mode if hmm, if that is where you you go with it and then some of us hmm, I don't know what we do exactly. We recognize it for what it truly is. And trying to give that to somebody else is very difficult. If ever, it's probably never going to really work. 
you got everybody has to go through their own thing, their own way, and get to the other side. And it's a very interesting life. Uh, I'm finding it. Hmm, I, I hope I'm around for another twenty. I mean, my wife seems to think she can pull that off. So hmm, good luck. But the rest of the world doesn't seem to want to cooperate with it. So, well, that would take at least a week, honey. <laughs> I don't have that kind of I don't have that kind of jazz. Wow, she said never mind. Anyway, so thanks a lot for playing along with me on my uh journey through Denmark through this time of woe crap with the hoax and phew, wow. Anyway, we've got coming up tomorrow in the morning time. Grimnir will come on with the blues. Well, the noonish I forget the time zones fuck me all up, but when I listen to him, he's playing blues, <laughs> and we he plays the blues into the trivia game, and we play trivia. Fucking Grim, you should, we should handicap Grim and make him type with one hand, and it should be his left hand, <laughs> and his right hand should be tied to an anvil so he can't cheat. <laughs> Cause he no he 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 he's one of those trivia fuckers, but he can type. So, hmm. anyway, and then we got Hal Anthony, who I was talking about earlier. I hope Hal doesn't take it, you know, insulting. I'm just, I'm not an Admiralty Court fucking guy. Fuck him. <laughs> Hal's got another reason, another answer, another thing. And if you're into the law, that's the guy to talk to. That's what I've said. That's what I'll say. And I, I just hope it's not misinterpreted. It's just not my thing. And then we go Monday night. I know who we got on Monday night. I even know what time, because it's 1 o'clock in the morning here when he does Grim Leftovers. Ooh. Grim Leftovers on Monday at 7 o'clock on the East Coast. <laughs> hey, duh. Uh, I don't know, man. I was just trying to uh, observe and report what I truly see, and I can't find a way to do it without... God, it must sound like some bragging fucking monkey. And No, I just think that the people around me are reacting in the same fashion I'm reacting in, and it's it's good. So if that comes across bragging, oops, sorry guys, didn't mean to do it like that. And then uh, Tuesday night, I should be able to hijack Mary and get her to come and do a In a Perfect World with me. Now, tonight, oh yeah, after me, there's a, a Prince, I think, is it z -Pick still with him? I don't know who's doing the show with him. But the Power Hour is on, on Saturday nights now. Okay, now, back to... <laughs> and then Thursday, we got Larry and Rob with Dropping the Coil. That is at 2 o'clock on the East Coast. And then Friday night comes back to Grim and Moose on Freaker's Ball. So, there you go. And uh, thanks a lot for letting me do the radio here and... You know, give me a chance to speak from this perspective because not everybody's going to, you know, I've got my own personal perspective and I'm in a place that's not so harsh. So I guess a lot of uh, what I should be bitching about right now isn't that bad. So I'm going to be one of the few people on the radio going through this period of time without a complaint. And I, maybe it needs to be recorded that way for you know people to check out someday. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it's just me, you know, uh, hoping for a better world for everybody else. It could be anything. So, with that, I'm going to end it all and try to hook up. Let's see. i got to end the show, and then i got to go over yonder and then start up the, what you call it, on the thingamabobber. So, <laughs> thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time.